Hi, I'm Yanni Vatar, Music Director of the Pennsylvania Chamber Orchestra. I'm thrilled to be here with you this Sunday to present our fifth PCO Present. Last concert we performed an overture by Beethoven, Coriolan, as part of the 250th anniversary of Beethoven. Today we will perform a piano concerto of Mozart, but it does have a connection to Beethoven as well. This particular concerto, number 20, is um, one of the most famous ones of Mozart, and Beethoven actually performed it quite frequently and even wrote cadences for it. Mozart wrote a lot of music, piano music, concerti, string quartets, symphonies, etc., but his heart was really in the opera. And you can hear it so well in all of his music, even the piano concerti. The piano carries the main role, um, but having wonderful discussions uh, with every section in the orchestra. There are dramatic moments, uh, witty moments, lyrical passages, everything you would find in an opera. And personally, to me as a conductor, it is so much joy because I don't feel that I'm only accompanying a soloist, but also having um, a major role in this opera. The soloist is a Penn State faculty, incredible pianist, Christopher Guzman, and in a moment you will hear my interview with him. As always, we cannot wait until we can be back on stage to share music with all of you. But until then, please keep joining us for these Sunday performances. If you enjoy these, please consider supporting us. We know you believe in our mission, you trust our vision, and your support will ensure that we will continue to deliver first-class music performances to our community. Stay safe and healthy and enjoy the show. Hi everyone, I'm so excited to have with us today pianist Christopher Guzman. Hi Chris, how are you? Hi, good. Nice to be here. Um, for those of you who don't know, Chris and I knew each other uh, years and years ago when, when we were both students at the Juilliard School about 20 years ago, and we both got a lot older since then. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Chris, why don't you tell our listeners um, a, little about, uh, a little bit about yourself and your position at the School of Music? Um, sure. So um, I uh, teach piano at the Penn State. Um, I've been there since uh, 2011, and I'm now tenured associate uh, professor of piano. And uh, I grew up in Texas, and uh, 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 as Geneve said, uh, went to Juilliard for six years, and I lived in Boston for a couple of years. Um, but uh, I'm now really rooted in Pennsylvania, so um, it was really um, uh, a joy to, to be with PCO as a kind of hometown orchestra now. So when you played with us this past season, um, that was our second concert at the new recital hall, the magnificent recital hall. Yeah. And um, uh, I know that these pianos are spectacular. There's two pianos there. Yeah, and you were part of the process of uh, testing those pianos and, and getting them to the school or how did it work? Yeah, we actually, we had a couple of trips to New York to um, decide on uh, the kind of piano we were going to select. And, um, we ended up going to uh, uh, the Steinway um, uh, Gallery in, in Manhattan and also to the factory in Astoria, Queens. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, and it was, it was really great. And they happened to have um, uh, two Hamburg Steinways, um, which they don't normally have at the New York factory. So that was, um, this was very rare, and the stars just kind of aligned for us. And, uh, and, they're, and they're beautiful instruments, both of them. Well, you've played, you've played with the PCO before. Um, yes. I think it was before my time, and they had a different name then. It was the Pennsylvania Center Orchestra. Um, do you remember what concerto you played with them, and where? I played, yeah, I played the I played in Esber Hall, which is now Esber Esber Rehearsal Room. Okay, it's called. Uh, it's still there. The space uh, looks quite different, but um, I played the Bach D Minor Concerto. Okay. Okay, so it's a totally different experience playing in this new hall, different, this new very piano. Different. Yeah, <laughs> same key actually, same key of the piece, but yeah, very, uh, quite a different experience. Yeah. So speaking of keys, um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you've played several of the 
27 piano concertos of Mozart. Uh, is this the concerto you're playing with us? Is this one that you've played before or that you've always wanted to play? Or And maybe how do you see it in the uh, cycle of concerti of uh, Mozart? You know, I hadn't played it before. I've, I taught it a fair amount. And actually, I had some Curtin students who had just played it and um so it was a little intimidated you know trying to trying to play for them and, and you know practice what you preach and all that kind of stuff uh -huh. um but it was it was really uh it was such a pleasure to learn it and to have the opportunity to play it and in the cycle uh it's you know this one and the c minor stand out because they're the only two uh concerti that are in minor keys um out of the out of the the 27 and um, so they, they stand out for that reason. Uh, and I think the D minor especially is, is it's such a gem. And, and each movement has, has this personality and, and these, these melodies that are just unforgettable. You know, I always, I always, when I look at, as a conductor, when I see those concertos, I always think of them as um, almost like little symphonies with piano in it, where the piano oh, carries it when the piano carries the main voice. Um, what do you find technical and musical challenges in general of playing Mozart um, uh, on a piano or in general as a musician? Oh, wow, there's so many. You know, m musically, um, the difficulty is is the music is, as I said, it, it's a gem and, and you're striving for that perfection and when it doesn't happen, it, it's such a disappointment. Now, if you make mistakes in maybe some bigger romantic pieces where you could use a lot of pedal, uh, maybe it's not so obvious. Uh -huh. But in Mozart, it's obvious. Um, so that that's one difficulty. Uh, the other difficulty is um, that we're on a modern instrument. We're not on a forte piano. And so the, the, the balance between the piano and orchestra um, has to somehow we have to somehow think of what the forte piano and that original orchestra would have would have sounded like in that kind of balance and to match that and it's it's really an impossible task um but to to have that in your ear while you're playing and to be able to to change um and, and to practice with that i find that very difficult i i keep uh, being reminded i think it was schnabel who said uh, that Mozart is, uh, what did it say? It's too easy for amateurs and too hard for professionals. Sure, yeah, exactly. Um, and I think exactly. it's so uh, exact. Um, how do you deal with now uh, as a soloist and as a teacher, because uh, you have both roles um, in this crazy times of, of this COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, well, it's a, it's a learning process uh, for everybody. Um, fortunately, uh, my students are really very dedicated, and um, we've had uh, we've had to teach. I've had to teach online, which um, which I've gotten used to. It doesn't replace in person, and we're all looking forward to to going back to um, some form of in person um, lessons soon. Um, but we've been focusing on on what matters to us in the music um maybe it's a form of escape um maybe it's just us uh trying to uh to delve more to it to to ignore some other realities that we're faced with but um yeah i i found that it's 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 been a good time uh to to be a um to be a listener So I, I guess my last question that I want to ask you is, um, especially now that you've played already with the PCO, what has it meant to you to play with the PCO that is not just an orchestra you know, but performing with your colleagues? I'm sure you see some students in the orchestra that you probably recognize, freelancers from the area. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just interested in your personal experience that you can share with our audience. Well, I... You know, I found when when I was playing the Mozart that um, for some reason I did, and I mentioned this before, but I did feel like I was at home, and it was something about the the kind of enveloping acoustics of the hall, um, the brightness of the day, um, 
the uh, just the music itself, but also just having a comfort uh, level on stage. You know, sitting next to to Jim Lyon, who I played with before many times. Uh huh. Um, it just felt like a very natural music making process, and uh, performing in public um, isn't always that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, especially when you're playing pieces you haven't played before, and you know, right. Uh, playing in front of uh, your students and a large audience, um, but it did feel like such a um, uh, such a driven, uh, flowing experience. And it was yeah, and it was a large audience. Uh, uh, I remember that we were almost to full capacity. It was like sold out. And uh, and I remember everybody says you got to bring Chris back because he brings the audience. <laughs> well, I hope so. I hope I yeah. hope I, I hope I get to again. That was really uh, absolutely. We would love yeah. to have you back, and I would love personally to collaborate with you, not just there but in Bellingham as well, which you've played with us. Yeah. And um, and yeah, I hope that this COVID situation uh, ends up yes. sooner rather than later so we can all go back to performing and and gathering and enjoying live music. Absolutely. So yes. Thank you so much again for joining us. And I know our audience is going to love uh, hearing your uh, uh, concerto, whether they hear it for the first time or for the second time if they've been to that concert. Uh, it was real delight to play with you, and I can't wait to make music with you again, Chris. I, I can't wait either. Thanks so much. I, thank you.
I'm Nancy Eaton, a former member of the Board of Directors for the PCO and a longtime supporter of the orchestra. Thank you for being with us today. I hope you enjoyed the music. I actually sponsored this particular program last year when it was uh, presented live, and I was delighted when it was selected for this fall's online uh, presentation, the PCO Presents. If you're enjoying the music, I hope you will also consider making a donation to the orchestra. Any donation of any size would be helpful during these times, both in supporting this fall's online programming, but also preparing the orchestra to be able to continue to uh, present live programs in, in the future for this community. If you uh, have any interest in making a donation, you can uh, find the information online at the following address, pachamberorchestra.org slash support. I'll repeat that, pachamberorchestra.org slash support. And we would appreciate your consideration. I hope you'll also join us in two weeks for the next PCO Presents. You can find the program information for all the future programs through December uh, and information about the orchestra itself, either on our website or through Facebook. Uh, we hope you will continue to join us every other week through December for more music. And thank you for your support. Thank you.